NBA team owner declares, quote unquote, nobody cares about the Uyghurs. Um, billionaire uh, Chamath Palihapitiya, CEO of Social Capital, chairman of Virgin Galactic, and minority owner of the NBA's Golden State Warriors team, has come under intense fire for comments he made on the All In podcast, in which he stated, nobody cares what's happening to the Uyghurs, okay? He elaborated that the issue of the ongoing Uyghur genocide in China, out of all the things that he worries about, is quote-unquote below his line. These oh, wait, comments... I thought he was... Sorry, let's make I'm gonna make something clear. I thought he was warning as if we should care. Like he was like saying, like, I don't give a crap. That's what he meant. Like, I'm gonna unpack it just yeah. a second. Okay, Jesus Christ. This, I thought he was being good, but yeah, go on. Um, these comments were met with swift backlash, including from outspoken NBA player Anais Cantor Freedom, who wrote on Instagram, quote, when NBA says we stand for justice, don't forget there are those who sell their soul for money and business like Chamanth Pali, uh, Pali Haptia, the owner of the Warriors. On January 17th, uh, Pali Haptia posted a weak apology on his Twitter account, which lacked any mention of the genocide or the Uyghurs. Uh, the Warriors team released a statement that said, quote, as a limited investor who has no day-to-day -day operating functions with the Warriors, Mr. Palihapitiya does not speak on behalf of our franchise, and his views certainly don't f reflect those of our organization. What a disgusting comment. I thought this guy was being based. I, was, I thought he was, like, warning people. I was like, I mean, it's a little bit of an exaggeration. Like some people care about you guys, but he was like, I thought he was like bringing attention to the lack of care that like we need to care more about you guys. Like, no, why is nobody caring? Like, no, apparently like he was like, he was like, screw Like, wow. What a, well, like, so if you scroll down, asshole. we can watch a clip of what he said. This one? Yes. Unbelievable. Nobody, nobody cares about again. Is nobody this cares. Wait, what was that sound? Yeah, nobody cares about what's happening to the Uyghurs, okay? You you bring it up because you really what? care. And I think what that's... Wow. It's nice that you cares. care. The rest of us don't care. I'm just well, telling you a care? very hard... Wait, wait, I'm you're telling saying you, you very, personally don't care? I'm telling you a very hard, ugly truth, okay? Of all the things that I care about, yes, it is below my line. Okay? Oh, of all the things that I care about, it is below my line. Disappointing. Wow. One more time. One more time. Hold on. I can't believe this man. What a disgusting, garbage human. Nobody cares, about, again? Nobody, nobody, cares. Be, nobody cares about what's happening to the Uyghurs, okay? You you bring it up because you really what? care. And I think what that's nice that cares? you care. Look at this, this guy's reaction is this guy's reaction is perfect. Look at look at the disappointment in his face. Like what? Look at the shock. Like what? Look at them. Look at his face. Look at what? Look at this is the best reaction you could ever ask for. Look at his face. And I think what that's do you mean? <laughs> what? What do you mean nobody cares? Look at this. This is perfect reaction. Nobody cares about. Again? Is no, this no, must be, yeah, nobody cares about what's happening to the Uyghurs. Okay, you you bring it up because you really what? care, and I think what that's nice that you cares? care. <laughs> ten out of ten. Thank you, whoever you are. I don't know who you are, but yes, the rest of us don't care. I'm just well, telling you, very. Well, I mean, good to know. Thank you for letting us know. Like, I don't know who you are, but I hope this is forever this would be what you rem are rem and people rem remember you for right this would be the highlight i don't know whatever you have accomplished whatever you have done this needs to be highlight you are you are beneath the rest of us that care about other human beings okay so good to know hard Wait, i'm you're telling saying you very, personally don't care i'm telling you a very hard ugly truth okay of all the things that i care about yes it is below my line so it's, you know it's very interesting because people think like they're being um they're they're better because they're telling you a truth that other people won't tell you right but we don't shy away from telling the truth and the truth is like yeah you are you are an asshole well like oh look at me so like this is not a revelation that seems to be like people think like oh i'm just like other people hide this and I don't. I will tell people I'm direct and honest with people. Okay. Well, yeah, you're being direct and honest pe with people. Thank you for being very clear and transparent about the fact that you are an asshole, right? You are a garbage. I mean, I shouldn't say that because YouTube is going to give me a strike last time I said that, right? 
but <laughs> but you are <laughs> you are beneath the rest of us because I, we care about other human beings and you don't but go on what are you going to say well i'm going to throw a little bit of a wrench into this so okay. this is a 20 second clip from a 40 minute discussion on human rights wait are you saying he's going to be a good person and that we this was taken out of context um I still, I, I'm not completely. Okay, but wait, wait, let me finish this video because I like how this is, how this ended. Hold on one second. Okay, oh, of all the things that I care about, it is below my line. Disappointed. Yeah, Nobody cares. Little... Disappointed. All right, but yeah, go ahead. Um, so this, this was his, re this clip is taken from his reaction immediately after the guy, the other guy in the clip, his um name is Jason, who's face flashes up who was like oh what you don't care uh, so that's jason so immediately proceeding when this was clipped jason was talking about um the segment was supposed to be about how biden president biden's approval ratings are extremely low and they were talking about different policies he's had and jason was like i think biden made, made a very strong statement about the uyghurs i really liked that but it's not showing up in the polls and then chamanth says I'm going to be honest with you. No one cares. So he's saying that's why it's not showing up in the polls because no one cares. But then he added himself. Yes. Here's the issue. And then repeatedly throughout the rest of this 40 minute segment, which the total podcast was like 90 minutes long. Um, it does. It is clear that he is actually in making a personal statement. Um, yes. And he the discussion turns into a larger um, trying dissection of um, he basically is of the opinion that you don't have a right or you shouldn't speak out about human rights issues in other countries until you've cleaned up your own backyard. He says that numerous times. And Jason is saying we can care about multiple things. And mm -hmm. um, Chamanth keeps on trying to make this equivalence between the human rights abuses in the United States and the human rights abuses of China and oh my God. Um, trying to do like a really bad equivalence or cost benefit analysis, not cost benefit analysis, but yeah, like a, trying to do an equation of equivalence where he's saying, okay, well, 10 they keep on saying okay so 10 uyghurs get tortured in a concentration camp like how does that compare against 10 million black men who are falsely accused and put in prison you know these are just numbers they're making up and mm -hmm. jason is saying you can't make those equivalencies on those levels you should make an individual equivalency between the experiences of those two people any Uyghur going from that situation would say, yes, I would take the individual experience of that happening to me in the United States over what's happening here. And then it turns into a discussion of um, how is how is the Uyghur situation just being used as a narrative to push anti-China um, rhetoric and um, to vie for political power? And then also, at what point is it appropriate to... Um, value human rights when making decisions. So Chamath was basically saying that he thinks that caring about human rights in the way that his co-host Jason does um, is a luxury belief. He says that repeatedly. I think this is a luxury belief. And um, he was basically saying that as he, Chamath is someone who um, was a refugee from Sri Lanka. And he's saying, when I came from that area, I abdicate, I abdicated my ability to criticize outwards. I, I, I'm, that's not verbatim. And I, when I adopted this country, I adopted the responsibility of tackling the issues in the country that adopted me. So my focus is on the U S and I'm, and I like, I don't care. And I do think he and some of the other co-hosts were making a valid point by saying that um, there is a level of exhaustion that many Americans experience when talking about these human rights issues in other countries because they're like, I'm dealing with inflation, I'm dealing with empty shelves, I'm dealing with the schools being crappy in my area, I'm dealing with crime, I'm dealing with my car being jacked. Like, um, and my government wants to constantly 
you know, signal about these other places, but what are you doing for me? What are you doing for, to make my life better? So trying to basically talk about kind of a domestic moral exhaustion, which I think was an interesting conversation it's to have. I think that's bull crap. You don't have to be like, nobody's demanding you to do every th something about all of this is, but you're making an effort to say like, you don't care. Like it actually requires more effort to make a signal that you don't care about. Like how much, imagine if you're going through so much in your life, right? And I just tell you like, hey, so-and-so's kids just died from cancer, right? Like how much effort do you, are you going to need to, to care, to just be upset about that, right? I mean, if you say like, hey, I don't care that my friend's kids just died because I'm exhausted with what's going on in my life. People are like, what are you talking about? What does one got to do with the other? Like, we're not like, we're not, when people like, we're not saying like, oh, go and help them, but it actually requires effort not to care. Like you just hear something and you get upset about other people's misery. How much effort does that need? How is your, how is your exhaustion could come in your way of actually feeling sympathy for your fellow human beings. What effort do you need to put people need to like, this is just feeling, this is just like you hear something and you feel something about it. And if you don't feel something about it, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> right. He repeatedly like, said that like, he doesn't care about that. He cares about systemic racism in the United States. Like, so we, like anything else outwards, like is like not his concern at all. Like doesn't matter. I mean, to him not his concern as in you don't have to like i think it's fair to say that you want to focus on something to when it comes to resolving something you don't have to, you do, you have to pick your battles you can't just fight every fight but just like you can't you don't even feel bad about it like just because you're focusing on one fight and not the other the fact that a lot of people are being mistreated and you, you just don't feel nothing like you don't that you don't you don't even feel like well that's unfortunate nothing just because you're focusing on another problem i mean how much effort does it take to be like yeah also that, that's unfortunate that's sad like how <laughs> well what is that gonna do against your activism on like good job you're focusing on something else and you're fixing those other issues but why would you have even no care that is like i don't understand i think that the these don't compute, it doesn't compute. One doesn't affect the other one. You could just be like, like for example, like uh, me, me and you, right? We care, we are, our activism is mostly about like, I don't know, political, religious stuff, right? Um, enlightenment values, free speech. That, that's what we focus on, right? Um, blasphemy laws, human rights, okay? Um, but we don't focus on climate change, right? We don't, that's not part of our activism, right? But we care about climate change, right? We care, we care, we, we, and we're grateful to the people who are focusing on that. You know, we, me and Susanna, we're not putting any effort into doing activism when it comes to saving the climate, right? We are, we, we, our focus is completely on something else, right? But just because our focus is complete on something else, if somebody comes and tells us, oh, what do you think about climate change? We don't go on like, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care about the climate just because we're focused like we don't say that like yeah but yeah go on. well um he was basically repeatedly stating that he's compelled to care about the things that he can do something about he's like i can't do anything about this but i can do something about what's happening in my backyard yeah um, those don't those do not it doesn't compute just because he can't do something about it that doesn't mean if you don't care, then there's something wrong with you. Okay. When we say, if, you know, that doesn't mean you have to do something about everything that happens. Okay. If you if, like, if example, let, let me go back to the example that I meant. Like if I say your your my best friend's kids just died, right? Well, you can't bring the kid back to life. Are you going to say, I don't care. And if I like, imagine how heartless you sound. If I say, I don't care that your kid just died. And I'm like, what? You don't care that the kids just died? Like, well, I can't bring it back to life. So I'm only going to care about the things that I can change. Like, what? You're like, yeah, I'm going to not care that your kids just died because I can't do anything about it. Doesn't make yeah. sense. Um, 
I think it, yeah, it was a, it was a really, I mean, like I said, I'm, um, I, people, so on Twitch, by the way, guys, follow us on Twitch, um, free the Uyghurs now is saying, no, Susanna, America lost its only caring about itself card when it interfered in so many countries. Uh, America is an empire, not a country. So guys, let me be clear. These are not my positions. I'm just doing my best to summarize and, um, convey to you the full totality of what this guy was saying, which was 40 minutes long and not 20 seconds long. So again, these are not my positions. I'm just trying to um, accurately portray his position. Um, it evolved into a bigger conversation about, okay, well, what can we do? Because the, the hosts of the show are like venture capitalists or they manage funds. And so they talked about like who they do business with, who they do, um, who they manage money for. And then it turned into a conversation of like, okay, well, do you um, accept money from Saudi Arabia and do you work with them? And Chamath was like, yeah, I, I, my, like one of my companies was started by people who do accept money from the Saudis. Yeah. Um, and they kept on bringing up the issue of Jamal Khash Khashoggi and, um, they never mentioned Yemen once. Like they kept on holding up Khashoggi as this giant, you know, scarlet letter against Saudi Arabia. And I thought that was so interesting because once again, that's the scarlet letter against the KSA, not Yemen. Um, however, this is important guys, I do my research. So today, like less than 24 hours before the show, the newest episode of the podcast came out. And so they were reacting to this massive outrage that hit them. And they, um, because there's four hosts of the show, they were reacting to how they, well, one of the hosts was like, I really feel like it was a witch hunt and a, a, like a mob. And this was cancel culture because he's, I, he's like the mob more than anything highlighted the hypocrisy and that Chamanth was right because who are these people who are outraged call, calling, acting as if he committed genocide himself? What are they doing about the situation? They're texting on their phones from China. Their money goes back into China. They're, they make use, they have economic benefit from the cheap labor out of China. So Bull it's all hypocrisy crap. and just no, virtue signaling and it's cancel culture. Bull crap. It's not cancel culture. When, okay. I, you know what? If, if somebody, if you say something so stupid and people come after you before it, and that's cancel culture. You know what? I'm, I'm, then I'm in favor of cancel culture. Okay. What did, like everything, like, Hey, I said something and you told me that it was wrong. I mean, cancel, cancel culture is coming for all of us. Boo fucking who? Oh my God. These crybabies. They can't just like, like, how have you been canceled? You're still speaking. Have you been banned from everywhere? Even we don't claim cancel. Like we lost our accounts and we haven't even been claiming that we're a victim of cancel culture, right? Like these people, how is this cancel culture? Well, or they're talking like about the reaction that they got and the hypocrisy. They didn't actually claim to be full canceled. They were talking about that attitude. Okay. So, okay. Here's the thing that nobody can say anything to anybody. Every, like, I'm pretty sure I could like touch something somewhere here. Like there's some child rape where er, everywhere. Okay. Nobody point anything out ever every single one of you you are using technology right now to talk to us okay somewhere in the one of the products you're using there was child labor use either in the clothes that you're wearing or in the technology that you're using okay so let's nobody can bring anything up about anything because we're all hypocrites okay nothing either in the food that you're eating, the clothes that you're wearing, or the technology that you're using, there's some crime, some, some, some human rights violations that has been responsible for the so for what, something that you're using, okay? So next time, actually, let's use this tactic, okay? Next time somebody calls you out for anything, if you say, just be like, hey, nice phone you have there. How much child labor, do you know? You, you're a hypocrite. You can't tell me that I'm wrong. You're, you have child labor in your hand. Like, what are you talking about? What like okay then shut up everybody just shut up nobody point anything out what standards what i thought was really interesting was 
based on so his co-host jason was giving him a lot of pushback on a lot of things he was saying he's like the united states isn't doing anything about this and he's like actually we have we have sanctions we have these um thing something went through congress recently i think um i think what went through congress was about business coming out of the xinjiang region and he kept on saying like the u.s isn't doing anything about it and then when i watched the episode that came out a few hours ago um I noticed that I could tell by the way that all of the hosts were talking about it was that all of them, um, well, the the guy who gave him the pushback, Jason, was already very well informed, but I could tell that the other ones actually learned a lot more in the week since this transpired based on the way that they were talking. And what's interesting is they actually brought up the atrocities in Yemen during this new episode that just came out like today. When, ta when talking again about the issues of who do we do business with, how, who do we, um, ha economic incentives and all this stuff. Um, so there was some growth. I feel like his, it didn't fully seem authentic to me, um, some stuff coming from him. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like what I did think was interesting, they said more than anything, um, the outrage over Tremont saying this may have actually helped raise awareness about the Uyghurs. Yes, you, you're like a sacrifice no. that we're putting at the altar, your reputation for us to use to bring more attention to, <laughs> to, this, to this issue. Um, I do agree, though, that the politics, the anti-Chinese politics, makes it more politically... Mm, um, profitable to bring attention to eager muslims right so i unfortunately the yemeni situation doesn't have that you know you know what i mean like you know but i'm not complaining the eager situation does need attention and the fact that being against the ccp is a politically profitable thing to do and if the Uyghur situation is being used as a way to fight against the ccp i understand that the motivations sometimes are not necessarily purely because of the interests of the Uyghur Muslims. I understand that that's how it works. But at the end of the day, because the situations of Uyghur Muslims is really bad, even if that is their real motivation, so be it. You know what I mean? So be it. Because they deserve all the attention they could get. Like we see like when it's not politically profitable to bring up the attention to, pe to people that need attention, like the civilians in Yemen, then you don't get nearly as much attention. So guys, like, bring attention to the Uyghur situation in China, but also remember the forget the forgotten war um, and the greatest human rights humanitarian crisis of our time right now is happening in Yemen, and not many people are talking about it. So please try to educate yourself about that and bring more attention to what's happening there as well. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.